if there ever was a high-profile character that had the misfortune to be owned by the wrong company, it's Superman. Once the symbol of truth, justice, and the American way. Under the stewardship of Warner and DC Comics, Superman is now a symbol of truth, justice, and a better tomorrow. But better for whom, exactly? Certainly not for Superman himself or his legion of fans. In this video, we'll go through the recent degradation of Superman in the comics and on film, and why they choose to make him the butt of so many jokes. Now, to begin with, I must admit that I don't follow what goes on in DC Comics too closely, so I can't go through the full extent of Superman's comic book degradation. Only what has reached me through the headlines, many of them in Bounding into Comics. And based on those, I'm not inclined towards picking up any DC books anytime soon. But if you do, then, well, to each their own, I guess. DC Comics clearly see Clark Kent, the traditional Superman, as a problem. In April of last year, they announced they were cancelling his long-running Superman title and replacing it with Superman, son of Kal-El. That would be Jonathan Kent, son of Superman, who becomes the new Superman when his father went missing in action. It was, by the way, this Superman who decided that the old catchphrase Truth, Justice and the American Way wouldn't do, and replaced it with Truth, Justice and a Better Tomorrow. According to Ethan Van Skyver, a major reason for the change could be that the phrase Truth, Justice and the American Way is no longer under trademark protection. That doesn't mean Superman can't say it, but that everyone else can too. Apparently, they want a new, unique phrase that is copyrighted, so that no one but Superman can say it, certainly not monetize it. And that's where Truth, Justice and a Better Tomorrow comes into the picture. Plus they apparently think it's going to play better internationally. As someone not American, but educated enough to know what the American way used to mean, I did not care much for that change. Given that the definition of some words have been subversed and modified in recent years, truth, justice, and a better tomorrow, to me sounds like something Superman Red Sun would say. If they want to increase Superman's international appeal, then making him an SJW poster boy may not be the best way to go about it, but that's exactly what they did. Because not long after, they made him gay, and then they made him an activist. You can of course interject that none of this is the real Superman, it's just his son taking over the family business and taking it in a new direction. But the real Superman won't get away that easily. Over the past few days, a comic book page has been making the rounds, in which Superman appears to be, I can't even say the word on this platform, and version 1.0 of the thumbnail didn't go down too well either. Let's just say that Superman was on the receiving end of activities which are perfectly okay between consenting adults of sound mind, but which otherwise should not take place under any other circumstance. Yeah, let's go with that. I think Sir Humphrey would approve. The comic this page is from was actually released several months back. That no one picked up on it until now can only be seen as a testament to how diminished DC readership has become. Be that as it may, the story is one of the stories featured in issue 1 of Superman Red and Blue, which is an anthology comic featuring out-of-continuity Elseworld stories by various writers and artists. This particular story was written by writer, producer, and filmmaker John Ridley of 13 Years a Slave fame. Take note of that, because there's a theme here. Ridley's untitled story is a follow-up to a much stronger story from the 70s, in which Batman and a kryptonite depowered Superman were prisoners in the Soviet Union. In Ridley's story, he retconned this to them being held in captivity for eight months, and Superman in particular being broken in as a means to break him. The story itself picks up many, many years later and deals with Superman returning to the location and under the guise of conducting an interview, revisiting his captor, who is now an old, wealthy man. When asked if he has any regrets, the former captor, who doesn't know that he's talking to Superman, brushed the question aside, 
saying that many mistakes were made back in those days, but all anybody could do now was move on. To this, Superman thinks to himself, it's easy to move on when you're the victimizer and not the victim. That, then, is the subtext of this story, placed there by the writer of 13 Years a Slave. It's obviously a socio-political commentary on American society. I'm sure you can see what the story really is about. In the process, however, whether he intended to or not, the writer also did a bit of commentary on himself. There is a panel where we see Superman fantasizing about burning his oppressor to ash, and that kind of sadism is completely out of character for Superman, so it probably reveals what writer John Ridley wants to do to everyone he perceives as his oppressors, especially those that want to move on. And he is, incidentally, far from the only writer to display such anger to those he deems oppressors, or otherwise not ideologically aligned with him. This seems to be a recurring theme among quite a few contemporary comic book writers. But let's get back to this story, because there's more, or we're not done yet. In the end, we learn that Superman's former captor is wealthy because of capitalism, which allows him to continue to exploit poor people. Superman decides that no one is going to care if he writes an expose as Clark Kent, so instead he is going to take action as Superman. And that's the message of the story, a call to action, to bring down the whole rotten system. Hardly Superman's finest hour in the comics, but at least he's still in the comics. J.J. Abrams is still developing his Black Superman project from activist and writer Taneshi Coates, and Supergirl will appear in The Flash, where the most recent rumors suggest that she will be set up to become the new Superman. We covered this in an earlier video, so do check that out for further details. As for Superman himself, despite Henry Cavill being very eager to reprise the role, Despite Kingsman director Matthew Vaughn publicly begging Warner Media if they please can let him make a great Superman movie starring Henry Cavill, Warner Media doesn't care. They don't want Superman. After all, they're the ones allegedly replacing him with Supergirl. What is it about Superman that irks them so? Why are they doing all of this? In the Wednesday, January 5th edition of our tri-weekly live show Midnight's Edge in the Morning, we will be discussing that. And we'll be breaking more scoops and inside word with special guest, entertainment journalist Mikey Sutton of Geekosity magazine fame. You don't want to miss out on that, so be sure to be here at 9am Pacific Time, that's 5pm London Time and 6pm Central European Time, and you do the math for everywhere else. For now, let me know what you think. What do they have so much against Superman in the comments? <laughs>